What we have here is the all new 2022 Kia EV6. And it's about as enjoyable to look at as it is fun to drive. And what I have here is its power adapter. Wait, where's the rest of it? <gasps> okay, so obviously I know what this is. It's the vehicle to load or V2L adapter that comes with the Kia EV6 and also the Hyundai Ioniq 5. And it's also one of the coolest, most interesting features of Hyundai Motor Group's new generation of eGMP electric vehicles. And today, I'm gonna to show you how it works. The V2L feature is available on EV6 and Ionic models, rocking the larger 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. And it allows users to take advantage of the increased capacity to output power via the standard SAE J1772 charging port, which gains bi-directional functionality with this V2L adapter. Now the V2L adapter looks a lot like the charging adapter you'd use to plug into your vehicle to put power into the battery, except for on the business end, instead of a uh, power cable that goes to a wall or a power box, you've got this bit that opens to reveal a 110 volt outlet with a design that's very similar to the one that you'll find in your house or office. If you live in North America or the parts of Asia that use this adapter, if you live in Europe or a part of the world that's on 220, your business end is going to look a little bit different from this. So basically the way it works is you take whatever you want to plug in and just put it in here. You can either leave the tail end open if you've got a bulky cable or close it up to protect it from the elements. There's actually a little gasket there to keep water from getting in too badly. And then you just plug it into your vehicle. Oh, and there's also a small power button on the V2L adapter that you'll need to toggle to activate the feature and again to deactivate when it's time to disconnect. The maximum load that vehicle to load is capable of drawing is around 3.6 kilowatts or about 15 amps according to the label on the adapter. For comparison, the ProPower onboard system that comes standard with the Ford F-150 Hybrid was good for 2.4 kilowatts, while its 240 volt upgrade option can supply up to 7.2 kilowatts. Now at the other extreme, most inverters that you'll find on conventional gasoline pickups average around 150 to 400 watts or 0.4 kilowatts to keep my units consistent. Now 3.6 kilowatts is more than enough power for a whole tailgating party, including uh, loudspeakers, a big screen TV or a projector, maybe even a popcorn maker and a mini fridge. Now if you're camping, you can use it to do things like uh, charge electric bicycles or run camp lights, charge your gadgets while you're overnight. Maybe you get the urge to uh, build a tree house in the middle of the woods. You can even run small power tools and appliances off of this thing like a circular saw. Hell, last year the power at my house went out for over 48 hours and I ended up having to throw away everything in my fridge and freezer. With this vehicle, I could have just run an extension cord into my kitchen, plugged the fridge in, and had enough capacity to run it for over 300 hours. That's almost two weeks, and there still would have been plenty of juice for charging my gadgets along the way. So I'm guessing there's plenty of overhead for this 400 watt shot back we're demonstrating with today. Now you could even plug in another electric car with its AC cable and trickle charge a friend or a neighbor in the event of an emergency. It'd take forever and you'd only get them a few miles, but that could be the difference between getting to the next charging station or home for a faster, more complete charge. Now the EV6 is a BEV, and that means that all of its power, whether you're talking about V2L or most importantly for driving, comes from the battery pack. And you don't want to find yourself in the embarrassing situation of needing a tow because you drained your whole battery charging up someone else's car or partying at Burning Man for a week. So to help you control it, you've got an V2L menu right here in the infotainment. Here I can set a discharge limit for the system. I've got options from 20% all the way up to 80% of reserve battery and I can set it in increments of 10. So if I set it here to 70% I want to keep for myself, then V2L will end once I've gotten below 70% battery and I can make sure that I've got enough range to get home safely. Oh, and while we're in here, the EV6 also features a second 110 volt outlet under the back seat so you can plug in and charge your gadgets like uh, laptops or drones or in this case, camera batteries on the go. It's also lockable if you've got small kids back here and you don't want things jammed in or spilled onto the outlet. So there you have it, the V2L system in the all new Kia EV6. Now remember, you can find this same system in the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and presumably it'll also be present in other upcoming eGMP vehicles from the Hyundai Motor Group like the Genesis GV60. But what about the competition? 
Well, remember that Ford F-150 hybrid with ProPower on board we told you about? It does 7.2 kilowatts. Well, with the upcoming Lightning, it's getting upgraded to 9.6 kilowatts. That is crazy. So what do you think? Is this just a gimmick or is this a killer feature for the EV6 and its siblings? And if so, what kind of junk would you plug into it? Let us know in the comments below. And when you're done, maybe head over to theroadshow.com where our full first drive review can be found. There I'll explain to you why I think that this is probably the best vehicle that Kia's ever built.